right. But anyway, guys, welcome to some ACC conference action for college football week 12. The only reason why I said it is because I literally just dropped my phone before we started recording. But anyway, yeah, my name is Brock Page, and as always, it's great to have you here today. And with that said, let's go ahead and dive into some Week 12 ACC action. We're going to start with Syracuse squaring off against Louisville. 7.30 p.m. Eastern kickoff this Friday night. The Louisville Cardinals are the 18-point favorite at home. Totals 56 and a hook. We're 4-0 in our last four extra daily picks on patreon.com slash page. And if you want to access today's extra daily pick, it's only going to cost you just $2.99. We're also 3-0 in our last three underdog tier package picks as well. And that membership costs just $4.99. Now, we currently have over 725 members signed up and active on that site. And if you want to join those folks and get in on the action, the link for that site is in the description section below. And once again, that's patreon.com slash page. And when it comes to this Syracuse-Louisville matchup here, the Louisville Cardinals, they've actually lost their last two straight uh, little, uh, you know, losing streak for them here. And they gave up 73 total points during that stretch in those two losses. Now, the Cardinals have also lost six out of their last seven, and they're giving up nearly 200 rushing yards per contest. This Cardinal D has just three interceptions through eight ball games. And they're also giving up 32 points a game on their home field. Now, the Cardinals are taking on a Syracuse program who successfully covered the number in two out of their last three themselves. The Orange, they're also 2-1 and one against the spread when they travel this season. The Orange has 17 total takeaways on the season. Linebacker Michael Jones has three interceptions from that linebacker position. Two forced fumbles, 56 total tackles. And a couple of fumble recoveries as well. And of course, can't forget about Jeff Canton Arku, who has uh, a forced fumble and a scoop and score. Uh, Canton Arku, uh, Arku also has 50 total tackles on the year. Now, the Orange have successfully covered the point spread in four out of their last six conference ball games. And when it comes to the total in this one, Syracuse has gone four and two to the over in their last six ball games. Meanwhile, two out of Louisville's last three contests got over the line themselves. Uh, one more thing to add as well. The cards are a perfect 4-0 to the over at home this season. So we're going to start off uh, the program here today leaning toward an underdog. Give me the underdog Syracuse Orange plus 18, keeping that one close. And the over 56 and a half in that game. Before we go ahead and move on, just want to take another quick time out and welcome you to the video. Got some lines and personal leans out for college football week 12. And of course, this is the ACC edition. But before we dive into some more free content right here on YouTube, just have to quickly remind you once again that we are 4-0 in our last four extra daily picks on patreon.com slash page. We are red hot on that website right now in the extra daily pick. And if you want access to the extra daily pick, to today's EDP, it's only going to cost you just $2.99. We're also 3-0 in our last three underdog tier package picks on that site as well. And access to the underdog tier is only going to cost you just $4.99. Now, we currently have over 725 members signed up and active on that site. And if you want to join those folks and get in on the action, link for that site is in the description section below. And once again, that's patreon.com slash Brock Page. And moving on, we're going to dive into some Saturday action. I'm talking about Clemson, Florida State. And that's going to be a 12 p.m. Eastern start time at Doak Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee. Now, the Clemson Tigers are minus 34 and a half on the road, total 65. Clemson is 7-0 straight up on this season when Trevor Lawrence makes the start. The Tigers are scoring 45 points a game. And they're throwing for over 350 yards per contest. Lawrence is completing 71% of his passes. And he's thrown for over 1,800 yards. Amari Rogers has 48 grabs for 720 yards and six scores. And, of course, running back Travis Etienne. He's got 37 catches out of the backfield. 490 yards. I'm sorry, 491 yards receiving. And a couple of scores uh, catching the ball himself. 
Now, ETN's got over 630 yards on the ground as well, along with 10 total rushing touchdowns. ETN is averaging 140 yards from scrimmage a game. Meanwhile, defensively, the Tigers are giving up just 19 points a game and under 195 yards per contest through the air. Safety Nolan Turner has a trio of interceptions from that Tigers secondary, 26 tackles and a couple of PBUs. Linebacker Balin Spector also has 46 total tackles on the year, two and a half sacks and a fumble recovery for Spector. Now Clemson has covered the number in four out of their last five meetings at Doak Campbell Stadium. The Seminoles on the other side of things, well, they're coming fresh off a 16-point loss to NC State. Now the Knolls are currently on a three-game losing streak, and they gave up 127 total points in their last three ball games. That is remarkable. Now the Knolls are just two and six straight up on the season, and they've successfully covered the point spread in just 25% of those ball games. Florida State is also scoring just 22 points a game, and they're throwing for less than 200 yards per contest. Florida State is completing just 53% of their passes, and they've thrown 12 interceptions on the season. A dozen INTs, not a good uh, stat to uh, have a lot of. Uh, but anyway, this Florida State O-line has given up 28 sacks on the season, and the Knolls have just eight receiving touchdowns on the year as well. Now, the Seminoles, their leading receiver on the team is averaging just 41 receiving yards per contest. And when it comes to the total in this one, two out of FSU's last three ball games got over the posted number. Five out of their last seven contests also got over the line. Meanwhile, Clemson on the other side saw their last four straight get over the total themselves. Give me the Clemson Tigers minus 34 and a half and the over 65. Next matchup, it is going to be Virginia Tech Pitt. And that is going to be a 4 o'clock Eastern kickoff at Heinz Field. As we can tell, a lot of games. Is this not on the board here? Get out of here. I always say it. I should double check these before I start recording. That is ridiculous. Anyway, uh, come on, Xfinity. You got to do a better job than that. But anyway, Virginia Tech Pitt. 4 p.m. Eastern kickoff at Heinz Field. The Hokies of VT are the three-point favorite on the road. Totals 55. Virginia Tech is averaging 36 points per contest, and they're rushing for over 260 yards a game. Running back Khalil Herbert, 852 rushing yards, 6 TDs, 8.2 yards per carry. He's also averaging 107 yards rushing per game as well. Quarterback Hendon Hooker. Uh, also has uh, rushed it into the end zone seven times on the season. Hooker's uh, rushed for nearly 600 yards and averages 5.6 yards per carry. The Hokies have been victorious in nine out of their last 13 conference games. They're taking on a Pitt Panther program who's lost four out of their last five themselves. The Panthers have also failed to cover the point spread in six out of their last seven. Pitt's just one and four against the number at home, and they're barely averaging four yards per play at Heinz Field. Now, the Pitt Panthers have scored just nine total touchdowns through the air, and their leading rusher on the team is running for only 39 yards on the ground per contest. That's bad. Pitt successfully covered the point spread in just 25% of their games for the entire year, and when it comes to the total in this one, Pitt's last five straight ball games all got over the posted number. They're 75% to the over for the year, Meanwhile, two out of Virginia Tech's last three ball games got over the line themselves. The Hokies are officially 3-1 to the over when they travel this season. Give me Virginia Tech minus three in the over, 55 in that ball game. Next matchup, of course, this is on the board here. Abilene Christian makes it to our big screen, but uh, Virginia Tech doesn't. That makes me sad. But anyway, Abilene Christian taking on Virginia, 4 p.m. Eastern. Start time in Charlottesville. The Virginia Cavaliers are minus 35 and a half at home. Total 60 and a hook. The Cavaliers have scored a bunch of points over the past couple of ball games. 75 total points for Virginia uh, during that span over the course of their past two games. The Cavs are also on a two-game winning streak, and they successfully covered the point spread in their last three straight. UVA scoring 34 points a game on their home turf. 144 yards per game on the ground at uh, home as well. 
The Cavaliers have won three of four at Scott Stadium this season, and they covered the point spread in three out of those four home games. Meanwhile, defensively, Virginia's gotten to the quarterback 24 times this season, nearly four sacks a game they're averaging. This Cavalier defense also picked off the quarterback seven times, and they have 13 total takeaways. Safety Brenton Nelson has a pair of interceptions from this Virginia secondary, a dozen tackles for Nelson. Linebacker Nick Jackson also leads this program with 74 total tackles, along with two and a half sacks and a forced fumble. Virginia's been victorious in 10 out of their last 11 home games, and when it comes to the total in this one, three out of Virginia's last four home games got over the posted number. The Cavaliers also went 71% to the over for the entire season. Give me the Virginia Cavaliers minus 39 and a half and the over 60 and a hook in that contest. And with that, we're going to dive into our next and final matchup for the show. It is going to be the Liberty Flames versus the NC State Wolfpack. 7.30 p.m. Eastern kickoff at Carter Finley Stadium. The Wolfpack of NC State is minus four. Total 66 and a half. NC State gives up 34 points a game and nearly 180 yards a game on the ground. Meanwhile, offensively, the Wolfpack has thrown double-digit interceptions, and the row line has given up nearly 20 sacks. They're taking on a red-hot, undefeated Liberty program who beat Virginia Tech in a stunner just a couple of weeks ago. They were actually able to put up 38 points on the Hokies in that program-changing win. The Liberty Flames are a perfect 3-0 against the spread on the road, and they've successfully covered the number in 75% of their ball games for the season. Now, Liberty's averaging... 313 rushing yards a game on the road. They're also scoring 41 points per contest. Quarterback Malik Willis has 700 rushing yards on the season and nine touchdowns on the ground. He's also thrown for 15 touchdowns and over 1,600 yards through the air. Running back Joshua Mack also has 534 yards rushing on the year and a trio of scores. Mack is averaging 5.2 yards per carry. This Liberty Defense on the other side of the ball, they've also been able to hold their opponents to just 22 points a game and just 175 yards passing. Anthony Butler has a pair of interceptions from that linebacker's spot, 51 total tackles and four PBUs. And of course, defensive end Darrell Johnson, he's got himself seven total sacks on the season, one interception and a forced fumble for Johnson as well. And when it comes to the scoring in this one, Liberty's last four straight games all got over the total. They're 3-0 to the over on the road. Meanwhile, NC State is currently 75% to the over for the entire season themselves. So with all that said and done, I'm going to go ahead and lean toward the underdog Liberty Flames plus four, keeping this one close in the over 66 and a half in that game. And with that, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on Patreon. You guys decide to get a package here today, just keep in mind, we'll bill you the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. Most importantly, uh, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, happy Wednesday to you. Happy hump day to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at patreon.com slash page.